and we're live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so happy it does that. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Galaxy's Edge podcast. My name is Walt, and I just had way too much fun doing that. <laughs> and I could get to see it on the replay on the uh, <clears throat> dream screens. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, we are talking tonight about the Galaxy's Edge series by Jason Onsbach and Nick Cole. Welcome, welcome, welcome. If you're a part of the fan club, uh, we adore you. We love your posts. Keep posting. Uh, if you're a part of the insiders, we love you uh, just as much, if not more. Uh, and, but don't make it weird. And then, of course, if you're uh, rocking and rolling on the Discord, um, hasta lasagna and don't get any on you. So uh, we're going to talk today uh, going, uh, going from uh, down to up. We have Matt from Australia. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, mate. How you doing? I can't answer that question without copious more amounts of caffeine. Uh, we have Daniel from the left coast. How are you? Fantastic. Right on. And then uh, we have JR from the east coast. What's shaking? Not much, not much. Doing All good. Right. Although we should get uh, we should get the Australian to do some of the funny slang like, a dango ate my baby. <laughs> Oh, bl- oh, bloody hell, mate. This fucking kangaroo and dingo just ate me baby while I was getting some veg on my toaster, right? <laughs> now, he just has to, now he just has to tell us he loves the blooming onion in Foster's beer. <laughs> that will <And> never happen. <laughs> However, never, I refuse to admit it. Right. However, I will, I will say that uh, that is now going to be my new ringtone. So... <laughs> Uh, tonight on Galaxy's Edge, we have a pretty cool show for you today. Uh, we have lots of stuff to talk about, and uh, Christopher Winder is making fun of you saying, Ooh, JR is there, because um, uh, everybody knows his picture. Um, so uh, we're going to start off with uh, our usual uh, disclaimer. Uh, as this is the Galaxy's Edge podcast, we like to talk about the Galaxy's Edge. So that being the case... Um, there could be spoilers. We're going to try and keep them to a minimum. We're going to try and vague look as much as possible. We're going to hope that uh, whoever's pounding the angry keys keeps them quiet. And then... <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> and then... Uh, uh, but just remember, so uh, if you don't want to be spoiled, uh, if you haven't read the books, consumed all the media, and done all the things, check your corners. Make sure you have a wingman and do what you've got to do uh, to keep the uh, fun you spoil from being your own. That being said, um, boys, what's been going on in the Discord? Uh, you, you, do, you do the talking. Uh, which way is it that way? That's the way. <laughs> you, you do the talking. See, you make with these the Australians say they don't know. Oh, it's actually this side. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, uh, it's been. This Discord's been really busy, honestly. Uh, a lot of talk has been happening in TakeOver. Uh, people are catching up that are new to the series in Season 1 from those uh, those books that were given out, uh, which was fantastic. It's always get uh, nice to get new fans. Uh, uh, Warden, he's actually been on the show before. You guys probably remember him. He uh, got a whole section set up for gaming in the Discord. Uh, and he's uh, got the giveaway set up so that you know he can start giving away gifts uh, for gaming platforms and stuff like that. And uh, we might be having somebody pop on in a little bit um, if they can get it sorted out. And they're going to talk about the Galaxy's Edge Arma 3 mod. And, yes. Yeah. That's some sexy so. stuff. Super sexy. And- and then, of course, we have Mother Ree in the uh, Discord dispensing her, her words of wisdom to the young whippersnappers about all things love and romance, <laughs> war and uh, violence, you know, all the, the spectrum of love. Right on. And all, all so. things keep, he can keep his gallon. That's what we love. Yep. Blood, violence, love, and silence. Okay, so um, what would you guys say would be the most hopping channel on the Discord this, uh, this particular week? Um, the Oba Cafe, I would say, has been most active. I can't even keep up. Really? That fast? Yeah. Honestly, uh, I've the, the Discord's been popping in a lot of channels this past couple weeks. So. Right on. Oh. Yeah. Uh, well, I'll take it when I can. I'll take it when I can. Um, if you guys had to pick a feature channel for this week, what would it be? All right, I'll go first. Then I would say the uh, the Obsidian Crow workout channel, mostly because I need them kicking me in the uh, backside 
to get my keister moving. So she, uh, Mother Ree's in there too, showing all of us up, making us all embarrassed. We hang our heads in shame when she comes near. And uh, <laughs> she, she does the weekly, let me see your numbers. No, I want a picture of a screenshot or whatever. So... And uh, so let everybody know what the Obsidian Crow uh, channel is on that Discord server. So that is the channel that we created. Um, it's basically a way to, to motivate and keep each other um, accountable for our activities of exercise and the like. So, so you know, who's doing what, uh, workout routines, what's working, what's not. Um, I had earlier a question for some cold weather gear that wouldn't, you know, cause me to sweat my donkey donk off while I'm uh, out exercising, that sort of thing. Well, that's Anything the problem. Excellent. You see, if you're doing exercises approved for, for the Z, uh, that's not good. Oh, that's where oh. I've been messing up. Dang it. Why did you tell me that last month? Well, it's not my fault to keep you in shape. <laughs> um, so, uh, transitioning with my blunt force segue into some cool stuff, uh, we'll just uh, go around the board real quick. Um, aside from Galaxy's Edge, uh, what have you guys been up to this week? Have you read any Galaxy's Edge properties this week? Um, yes. I, um, we all know what it was, though. <laughs> what was it? Um, Savage Wars 3? Yeah, it was indeed was Savage Wars 3. It, yep. Mate, I'm telling you right now, uh, yeah, the bloody onions, the, the ninjas, they were everywhere. And I Dude. The Christ. Oh, I, uh, I don't usually get emotional books, even like, close to being like that but uh but mate i was getting the real like even from the start i won't say what happens but even at that start segment and the end segment the way it works like a like a like a private ryan sort of feel if you know what i mean if i can't say because those haven't read it you know etc right on the uh the other thing too um uh there was a, a part three quarters of the way through the book and when everything looked like it was about to end i mean just it was it was the it was five minutes to midnight and we were done, and then all of a sudden that that one element shows up and you're like, oh my god, mm. and you just yes, it was it was everything in a bag of chips, rocket propelled and super cool. Um, as far as taking the galaxy's edge and showing not only the baseline for where the legion came in, but why they are the one percent of the one percent and the battle scenes in this combined with the emotional impact and resonance fantastic writing i cannot wait for the audio for this because, it's, yeah. it's a case of like each book as each of the savage world books come out it, they're all great but one's each one's has gotten better than the last and i'd say even if it's a standalone series as well if people haven't read galaxy edge and it came out as a standalone series i reckon people would be able to get into it easy as well oh yeah so yeah. Hey. For those of us not insiders whose budgets are a little tighter, is Savage Wars, you think, closer to Legionnaire-style story or closer to, like, a Galactic Outlaws? Legionnaire. <clears throat> okay. Le Legionnaire, especially, um, especially the second book. In the second book, you get uh, a huge dose of what it was like to be a Legionnaire in those first days. Um and you see uh, there are certain policies that um, when you get into the first series that are unpopular with the House of Reason, um, the governing body of the Republic. Um, and some of these factors begin to play across a uh, certain spectra of the series, like uh, forget nothing. Um, mm -hmm. One of those criteria is challenged after almost a thousand years of um, the Legion being the way it is. Um, and in the second book, you kind of, you see why it is the way it is. And it's, it's just like, ugh, brutal. So, but yeah, definitely like Legionnaire. Um, you get a sense of what drove um, a certain colonel slash general slash <laughs> uh, war criminal uh, in the beginning. Um, yeah, so, what's that? Matter of perspective. Oh my God! <laughs> you know, and then people people saying, you know, wait a minute, he might not have been wrong. So, um, if you if if you really want an insight into why the Legion became the way they were um, uh, prior to the Battle of Sidon, and if you haven't 
checked out any of the Sidon stuff and you would like a taste and you are a Galaxy's Edge fan or you have seen the artwork or you've seen some of the Facebook stuff going around, um, you could go out and, and for your investment of tracking it down, go check out Tin Man mm -hmm. uh, yeah. on audio. Uh, and uh, you can get that uh, for the bubble on odd fans, or you can go track that down on uh, now it's on um, audible um, for what is it? 99 cents? $1.99. $1.99 on, on audible. Uh, for those of you who want all of your audio content in one place, um, you can see how nasty the Legion can be. And uh, Savage Wars is just the, the really great launching point for that. So if, if you get into that series, uh, I tr you, trust me, you will not be disappointed. So the um, a lot of people complain that with odd fans, you have to find a secondary browser to host the, uh, the audio files to play it for you. And they really? wanted to be able to just, yeah, I downloaded an app on an iPhone. Oh, because uh, you did it through a phone. Yeah, yeah. So the the audio file, if you want to listen to it on your phone while like, you're driving, you have to have another app to play the uh, the audio file they give you. Oh, okay. That's mobile. right, and that's why people uh, wanted it on Audible because then it's just at one place. I guess it was uh, worth the two bucks. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, for me, I just threw it onto my uh, music player app, and it worked out fine. I was like, yeah, okay. yeah, me too. So, but yeah, um, Tin Man. Um, it is an onion cutting fest. You will there will not be a dry eye in the house. You would nope. not think that way, um, but that uh, that kind of goes into our later topic where we're going to be talking about vehicles today. And oh my god, I love the vehicles in Galaxy's Edge. But before we do that, uh, um, but yeah, so Savage Wars three dropped for the insiders. So if you if you have a Galaxy's Edge insider subscription, uh, you got that uh, that book ahead of time uh, as an alpha copy kind of look it over, uh, tell the boys some of the blemishes, and then they can uh, they can fix it before it goes to audio. Uh, but speaking of audio, uh, TakeOver is out on audio. We talked about that last week on the Insider Show. Um, a lot of positive feedback for that one. Yeah. What do you guys think? I, I yeah. honestly thought it was a pretty fantastic uh, book. Uh, like I said, it, uh, it it's sad that... Uh, uh, one of my favorite characters got uh got that, but you know, it, it was, yeah, yeah. Look, Chris had it coming. <laughs> it wasn't listen, Chris. Listen, they Don't did him guy. dirty, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I just Aaron Seaman listens to this and he goes crazy because he's like a Chris fanatic. <laughs> like we almost need a separate fan club for the Chris folks. Oh my god, that's disturbing. <laughs> Remember, guys. There's a spoiler alert for this. A character dies. <laughs> I'm done. Uh, uh, Christopher Winder is uh, in the show, and he's he's saying that uh, spoiler: Galaxy's Edge is coming out with a makeup line, starting with mascara. Aww. <laughs> Nice. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, Josh Hayes uh, jumping in to say, "Make him cry." Uh, Wyatt Justice, just in time for KTF me. Um, <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, um, I really enjoyed Takeover. I saw Takeover when uh, when it was coming out in segments because it was released as uh, as uh, short novellas, short stories, uh, all combined into that eventually combined into the one audio. How long is it on audio? Uh, I think it's like fifteen hours, something like that. Oh, so it's a, it's a pretty good. Uh, it's it's pretty good uh, length, like a full length novel. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it was it was worth it, definitely. Why is Christopher Winder imagining me with a huge mustache? Oh, twelve oh, hours. Honestly, it would suit you like um like someone from Agatha Christie or something. Like the Dear big Lord, that goes way out, <laughs> like definitely completely down under. Like Got that weird mustache. Hey, I mean, you know, we don't judge. We don't judge. Some and people got ask. weird fetishes. Yeah, and now they're throwing emojis into the Facebook chat. Mm -hmm. I'm shutting that down. All right, so, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, for those who don't know what TakeOver is, TakeOver is the story that takes place after Season 1 mm -hmm. of Galaxy's Edge. Uh, it is a bridge story between Galaxy's Edge Season 1 and the upcoming 
season two. If uh, you were an insider, you got a little taste of season two in the prologue <clears throat> insider email. Uh, but uh, from what I understand, the audio is just fantastic. Um, what is it? Uh, um, a, a certain uh, self-proclaimed number one fan was like squeeing all over the place because she was uh, given a character's name. Oh, yeah. And she's on yeah. one of the parts, uh, takeover parts of the cover. And she's right. like, it even almost looks like me. <laughs> like, sure. Well, well, that was intentional, I'm sure. Faces were changed to protect the innocent. The uh, innocent. But, yeah. I, the thing I really liked about the cover is uh, when um, takeover was coming out in installments, um, every installment came with its own cover. Yes. Uh, and uh, so the insiders would get it uh, for about two weeks on their own, and then it would go on sale directly on the website. Um, and uh, they were selling it in that uh, like um, that novella short story format. Um, so each one had their cover. The great thing about this combined audio edition and the soon to be uh, did they release the uh, um, uh, the digital copy yet? I think that's six months, but they're trying to see if they can get it sooner. That's what right you on. talked about last week. So um, uh, when they when they launched that audio um, that with the completed cover, it was all of the elements from each story cover combined into one, and it, I think it looks flawless, just absolutely brilliant. What do you guys think? I did love it. Yeah. How about you guys? Fantastic. What do you think of the Koobs? Dude, Pekek. Yeah. Oh my God. He he knows about getting that that big die going. Right. Oh, what yeah. would you? All, all I'm thinking. The audio. The, huh? the, the, the Cajuns everywhere are rejoicing at their dinner. <laughs> what what was that, uh, Matt? I have not listened. To, I've read it, but I have not listened to the audio. Well, we're just talking about the pretty pictures on the cover. Yeah, so you're good. Oh, good, good. Yeah, as I say, before before you slaughtered your life for not doing audio. Yeah, no, uh, honestly, the curves didn't look anything like I thought they did, but they look even more awesome than I imagined. So, they yeah. Are a bit... <laughs> yeah. I mean, essentially, I hate, I hate to make this comparison, but it's a frog with an AK. How much better could you get with that? Yeah. Right. Like right there in the background there to the right. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely brilliant. I mean, just... I love this cover. There is so much cool stuff. Plus, it works fantastic as a uh, um, works fantastic as like uh, if you want that um, that uh, big nice wrapper. Like especially if you got two screens rocking, this is a great mm -hmm. desktop. You know, put all your icons on the left side. You got that great artwork with the galaxies. You, you know, the galaxy just burning down uh, in the background. I, I really like the way this works. Um, I also I also like that the individual ones stood alone as well. So you could still get that like art for your wallpaper or mm -hmm. posters or something. Hell yeah. Um, in the beginning, uh, when, when these covers were coming out one at a time, um, they, they really did a great job of putting, um, uh, making the artwork really, really pop. Um, and in this one, you get uh, the Koob in the front. He's kind of like, He's got the most color and the most uh, standout lines that really draws your eye. Um, and then eventually, as your eye kind of rotates around the image, you start taking in all the other pieces. Um, but just like the tattoos um, on some of them as they're, as they're being uh, showcased, um, our, our favorite uh, Mr. Bowie in the background uh, with uh, um, his, uh, his uh, romantic interests, shall we say. Who, um, yeah, was an interesting character in her own right. Uh, there was a lot going on in this cover that just really, really popped. And I think they did a fantastic job. So uh, I can't wait to see some of the covers for season two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's gonna be it's gonna be sick. Um, so the uh, the what do you call it? Um, let's see. Let me find my screen again because now I'm lost. Because lots of well, we go for the same artist that did redid the Attack on Shadows um, cover. That's, we go on that style. That's got to be a uh, fantastic, great season two of covers. That yeah. cover is sick, absolutely sick. Right. She's bloody beautiful, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, the, when they did started doing the re uh, the redesigns of those covers, um, it, 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 some of them were just mind blowing. I mean, the um, Galactic Outlaws was good, but the attack of shadows oh my god yeah. right yeah, that armor beautiful 
Right. They need to do like a picture book with this like coffee table book with all the covers when they start yeah. getting some more of them. Somebody yeah. with uh, some graphic art skills should really take a lot of this art apart and would probably do good to create an RPG. I wonder how that would work. Haven't we been talking about the RPG for a while? Yeah, <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a one-man show. You gotta, you gotta give me room to breathe. Um, no, <laughs> surround him. Yeah. Take him down in force. Uh, that would not work out like you think it would. Um, so yeah, you forget that you forget that Walt's a uh, very, very hard-hitting operator. He would probably kill all three of us with ease. No, because no. I'm smart enough. I just call him Moab. That, that, yeah. wouldn't work, that wouldn't work either because I just call in Balder, and that that pretty much trumps the rest of what you got. Mo Moab would just take the whole state and just. <laughs> That's you know what Moab like, is, right? The yeah, mother yeah, of all yeah. bombs. Bombs. Yep. I love to my parents' songs right now, but that one is fifteen and very fat. Huh? <laughs> so she would drool on us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably, probably. <laughs> Matt just picks up the dog and throws it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> So once again, getting into our blood force segue, swinging it for everything we got and trying to hit hit for the fences. Uh, I want to talk about some of the vehicles in Galaxy's Edge. Uh, that first book, the first thing you, the first thing those guys are riding in is a combat sled. But you don't really get the word combat sled or what it's what it's about until about 10, 11 pages in. Mm -hmm. um, but you get that sense that they're all crammed in there because they're all just looking at each other, you know, and you. And uh, uh, Matt, have you ever had to uh, you ever had to ride in either an APC or like on a, a C-130 Hercules or anything like that? Oh, sure, I've made many, many times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, well, they're not built for comfort. It, it, I don't care what people say or what the movies show; they are not built for comfort whatsoever. So, no. if you want a sore ass, mate, a bloody ripped back, and uh, you want chronic headaches for your first trip. Look no further. Jump straight in the back of a C one thirty. You'll have all <laughs> those free of charge. <laughs> right. Um, how about a JR rode in a C one thirty? No, but I have ridden in the back of a Striker and some other uh, APCs. So Strikers are not for people that have knees. Yeah. <laughs> but you just you'll lose they slam them. together. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's like oh, we'll design it for four and say it fits eight. Oh my God! How about a Bradley? You ever been in one of those? I've been in one, but not not a, like for a mission, like just as a familiarization sort of thing. Yeah. So, and those aren't exactly comfortable either. No. How about it, Daniel? You've been in an APC or anything like that? About the only thing I've been in is uh, uh, some budget flights where, uh, due to me being six foot tall, my knees are hitting the back of the seats. So, I mean, I, I can have an imagination, but nah. Right. Lots of apologies. Yeah. Well, then, then there's the all famous cattle car at Benning. Oh, God. Oh, my God. <laughs> that was miserable. Would you like to explain that to the audience who might not so, understand what that is? When they're doing large uh, troop movements for training at Fort Benning School for Boys, uh, they literally put you in the back of uh, cattle cars, and they just screw you all in there nut to butt, and uh, they just drive you around. So you can like pack them in like sardines, get them to the range real quick. Hell, yeah. Uh, the other thing, too, is uh, um, it's not just for when you're at, when you're at training. Uh, when you got to go from where you work normally to a flight line in order to do a parachute jump, um, it's you and all your gear packed in as deep and as steep as they can get it. And uh, they, you know, drive you right to the flight line. You got to dump yourself out and then go right. A lot of times go right into pre-jump. So, no. yeah, sometimes, um, you know, uh, if you're lucky, uh, uh, it's training. And they have uh, those roach coaches there with uh, fresh coffee and maybe some, uh, you know, not four-day-old burritos that have been steamed for the last four days. So can um, we re really call that coffee now that we've had civilian versions? Does it qualify? It's kept you regular, and that's all we needed in <laughs> MRE at the environment. Fair enough. Regular shit. Oh, my God. Uh, but um, what is it? Meals ready to evacuate? Um yeah. So, so that's what we're gonna feature for our food at the uh, the meetup is uh, MREs, right? Not if you want me to come. <laughs> <laughs> um, you got but, like a Steve nineteen eighty nine MRE, just eat like fifty year old packs. <laughs> uh, there's a guy on YouTube that does that. He'll find like all these old sea rats yeah, or rats, good, whatever, yeah. and he just eats them. I'm like that guy's got to have intestines of steel, or he's right. slowly <laughs> dying, and we just don't know it. 
Um, real quick, we got uh, some comments in the chat on Facebook. Uh, Josh Hayes says he thinks it's awesome that uh, even when Dips is speaking English, he's still speaking in tongues. <laughs> hey, I mean, that, that must be nice for the, the women, right? Yeah, well, do what you can. <laughs> I got you, Matt. I got you. Uh, so, yeah, they start talking about a combat sled in the uh, in the first book, Legionnaire, and how they're pretty much packed in nut to butt. Um, the, uh, the sleds uh, pretty much resemble kind of like a real heavy version of like a... Um, uh, either a cougar or uh, a buffalo uh, MRAP. Yeah. Uh, that's kind of, uh, yeah. but a lot lower to the ground because obviously they're on repulsors and not um, uh, heavy wheeled truck tires. And they uh, don't have the v, v bottom for the IEDs. Correct. Right. Because, you know, they got, uh, they're made of sterner stuff. Um, at least but, that's what they tell you over at the House of Reason. Well, you know, it's probably also made by the lowest bidder. Uh, <laughs> But you got those those twin heavy blasters on top, which I think was a nice touch. Um, and if you go to the back of, let's see if I can find it. But if you go to the back of um, the actual book Legionnaire, um, they have a picture of one on the cover. Um, actually, shh, I'm leaving for just a second. Dangerous. All bad, terrible words that Walt should not be hearing right now. Got my signed edition of the anniversary edition of Galaxy's Edge, and uh, look at this nerd! Right, the hell? you're just jealous. Get out! Oh my god, that is such a nice book. Oh, it's so beefy. Do you need to, you need to go to your bunk for a minute? Just for a minute. I'm gonna go outside and smoke. I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, um, but it's it's right on the back. It's kind of in the description. And if you kind of yep. zoom in on it, you can see it. You can see the windshield. You can see the twin uh, blasters and that it's it's hovering just a few, uh, like a meter or so off the ground. Because mm -hmm. it's Galaxy's Edge. They don't use the standard English measurements. Um, but, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. But uh, um, it, it's a neat-looking vehicle. Kind of reminds me of, like... Um, Kind of reminds me of like one of the outlaw vehicles that the special forces have, only a little more enclosed, or maybe uh, a hum, uh, like an eleven forty one Humvee on a set of repulsors. Uh, I think it's a really great design. I I, I like the way that they uh, they did it, um, or maybe even uh, you know like uh, Jr. was talking about uh, a striker, um, just without without any of the uh, the wheeled suspension. It's got instead it's got uh, repulsors. Um, the only thing I didn't like about it is uh, the fact that uh, about the design, and, and you can tell that the House of Reason was probably trying to save money, uh, and that they probably uh, consulted with the Clar Clinton era of vehicle design. Uh, no, um, no gunner's cupola around those uh, around those twins. Um, did you guys notice that? Yeah, um, I'm magnifying the heck out of it right now. Right, there's no there's no armored collar where the gunner stands. I so, see, you're right. So when that gunner is defilated, you know, uh, and he's up to his waist, if he doesn't sink down to his name tape, uh, homeboys to get any blaster bolts that are coming his way. I guess they just assume everyone's in uh, in the Mark Ones or something. I don't know. <laughs> the Mark sense. One. <laughs> yeah, but who but, can afford those these days? True, but I mean. We, what was when it was the, the when it was built? What was the worn? Because that's what it was built to accommodate. Right, but it was probably it probably wasn't the the Mark One because the Mark One was many 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 generations before that. But they never say when the when the sled was developed either. Correct. So could be. Yeah, that's true. Um, if that's what you're wearing, do you really do you really need the cupola? <laughs> um, lowest bidder armor. This is also true. it could be a weight thing too. I mean, what's the repulsor capable of? Yeah, hey, that's a that's a. I didn't even think of that. You know, that was like when they uh, when they up armored the Humvee. Oh yeah, you uh, killed the engine. They overheated like a mother. Oh yeah, they slapped they slapped so much metal on top of that that formerly just Kevlar frame, Kevlar and carbine. I mean carbide. That it was. Uh, um, they had to put a whole new engine in that thing. Yeah, you're lucky if you get even with the new engine. You're lucky you could get 55 miles an hour. Right. Um, 
the, uh, the but I mean, as far as like the main vehicle to see, hey, I see doggy. Yeah, poor little thing. She's very upset. She's very upset at the moment. Oh what, yeah, is, is, is it because you're there? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because all me. <laughs> we love dogs. Um, but yeah, so I mean, you got uh, you you had this really cool vehicle design, uh, and that was the really the only flaw I saw in it was that uh, you know no uh, no surrounding collar for the gunner. Um, so uh, we so yeah we we didn't have one either, but we had one that was built into the actual fifty mount. So maybe there's one that we can't see because of the angle. They gotcha. just you know just a just a one pl hanging plate like you had on the the fifty cal. Yep, the strike plate. Yeah, I mean that might be enough. It's better than nothing. I don't know. I want armor. <laughs> we, yeah, we, that's all we have. Strike plate. Plate. What, we you're, you're have the strike me, plate. What? Well, you're telling me your massive pecs can't deflect bullets? Um, no. Well, yeah. Mm. No, no, no. These days, I'm, I'm, I'm old and round. Uh, they don't, they don't deflect as much as they absorb. Um, so. Uh, uh, Going past the sleds, um, another thing that they 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 uh, they they start uh, uh, getting into, and, and you start getting hints of uh, right around. Uh, I think it's book four. Uh, they start talking about HK Mex. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. right. That's what we're talking about. Them HKs, Hunter Killer Mex. Um, uh, originally, does out really, dude? <laughs> what? <I'm just> like... <laughs> I, was, <laughs> I hit the murder button. That was all me. Um, so right around, uh, right around book four. Or so we we start hearing about these HK mechs, and then you start seeing them show up in later books, and you're just like, "Damn, somebody got battle tech in my legionnaire." Um, I was just, I was all in. Uh, what do you guys think of those things? Uh, I love the HKs. I, I want more. Please, more. By we, all, we by all means, my favorite vehicle of the entire series. It, it is it really? I, I love mechs in general. I'm a big mech warrior person here, but I just love mechs in general. It's There's nothing more satisfying on a battlefield than watching this two-legged robotic motherfucker stepping around, raining hell, death, desolation, and chaos on everything existing. Mate, that makes my flim flams the not-so-big flim flams. I love it. <laughs> uh yeah, you know, an another way I look is uh, uh, I'm not Matt sure what he said was kosher, but we're gonna pretend that since it's in a foreign language, that it, was, it was decent. Oh my god, that was brilliant. <laughs> Matt Matt would honestly be the kind of person that'd be, you know, in the process of uh being with a woman and screaming out Gundam when he came to his uh <laughs> happy release. <laughs> Gundam uh, you Ooh, like you the Gundam. <laughs> Oh so, my god. <laughs> I just not safe for work warning on this episode. <laughs> so I just magnified the heck out of it, and it's possible that behind the uh, the image of the slick, that there is a, a strike. Yeah, the sled. Excuse me. That there is a strike plate. It's oh, just hard cool. to tell because the word "while waiting" is on top of it. We're gonna <laughs> have to get them to uh, to give us a uh, the back cover without the without the. I have it. I have it. I just I would have to dig it out. Yeah, that's that's what's gonna tell us whether it has it. So um, we get we start getting into um, a little book called um, The Reservist. Oh, what's that? And, uh, Who the I, hell wrote that? I was in love with the uh, the HKs as well. And the, <laughs> the, the name they gave it was just too perfect. Oh, my God. So, uh, JR, do, would you like to talk about the um, unbridled fury and sexiness that was the H hk mech in that scene so i may or may and not before, have before you go who are you what makes you famous and what is the reservist uh my name is jr i'm famous for being colorblind apparently according to jason <laughs> and uh <laughs> yes you are so and, and the reservist but the uh one of the things when i wrote it uh while i was talking to jason about it as we were i was writing that scene he goes, I don't know, watch or read uh, Starship Troopers or something and just leave me alone. So I did. And so I, I had the on the bounce was in my head. as I was writing it from the uh, the intro to Starship Troopers. Um, but yeah, I, I like I, I feel like something like that kind of mech, like there's two ways you can fight it. They can just stand there and be a tank and absorb and, and hit. 
but that just doesn't seem to be in keeping with the way the Legion fights. So if you want a vehicle that's going to support Legionnaires, then it has to be as flexible and maneuverable as they were. So I had it bouncing around a little bit. So that scene, that that whole battle scene was just I needed some alone time and a cigarette after that. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, you and me both. That scene was crazy, dude. That was the only scene that Jason didn't have to mess with when we were um, going back and forth. That scene I'm pretty was, proud of that one. Yeah, that scene was killer. So do um, you want to describe what the HK mech is supposed to look like? So it, um, as I understand it, it's basically like a, um, a giant Gundam. I think that's a good analogy as far as a physical description. But I, I was under, under the impression that there were several variants. So some of them were more sturdy, whereas I, I went with something that was lighter and more nimble. Um, but uh, Jason was saying that there were, you know, all kinds of sizes. Although I think the bigger you get, the more they become about shock and awe as opposed to just actual functionality. Because at a certain point in time, like if you have something too big, you have to think about how the ground is going to displace the weight. And so if you have something like you're in a muddy, you know, swampy terrain, that massive HK is going to get sucked right in, you know, that it's gator meat. So it, <laughs> you, you're going to, at a certain point in time, need smaller. Right on. Uh, I, I would, I kind of pictured uh, when, when I was reading it and especially reading the description, um, I was pe picturing the HK mech more like a, uh, like a Marauder in Battletech. Yeah, yeah. I can uh, see that. Big pot, yeah. chicken legs, tons of guns, you know, uh, either that or the uh, the other thing I kind of got, uh, especially, and I, I, it really hit me in the head um, when, uh, when, oh no, what happened, Matt? It's his time out of the month. Uh, it happens for the Australians. <laughs> but it, it's, yeah, I get a blood nose sometimes too. It used to be from the small tumor I had many years ago. It's random. It's not the tumor. <laughs> <laughs> great um so yeah uh the um uh when i was reading the scene um in the reservist so for for your reference uh the one I, I dug up my notes i actually used as a point of reference for myself the mad cat mark ii uh yep. battle tech yep yeah that um, was that was my visual reference that and uh um I really got a vibe of like a really angry, like one man Ed two hundred nine from RoboCop. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. yeah. Oh so darn! Why? Darn it! It just happened to blow one of our uh, associates uh, away in front of everybody. Yeah, I guess that's a that's a failed test. It's a, it's a temporary setback. <laughs> yeah, I'd buy that you from a a glitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so uh, yeah, I really like the HK Mex. Um, uh, but you can definitely see that you know on certain types of terrain, that's that's not where you want to you know play the game. You, so. you saw you saw the sheer awesomeness of what they're capable of as well with uh, the Tyrus Rex scene in season one. I don't know because we don't want to do spoilers. Let's, just, uh, but but yeah, right that on. was one of those moments too. All right, so we get to things like Turning Point, and we start seeing um, the main battle tank. Um, MBT. The MBT. What would you guys think of that? Oh, oh my man. Goodness. Yes. They're so oh, I like cool. I want, I want a visual of them. Uh, you mean and, like right there? Yeah, I was, that was a cute, uh, what do you call that? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm out. I was going to say it was a prompt, but I was looking for a fancier word. Right. I mean, that's just, that is a huge piece of armor. It's boxier than I, I, I pictured it when I read it, though. Right. But I, image. Much one. I mean, check that out, though. At the, at the, uh, at the base, we have, uh, we have, uh, what do you Ooh, there's it? a sled in the background, there's it looks like. in the background, yep. Check and it yeah, out. there's, there's almost looks like there might be a strike plate. Yep. A strike plate on either side and maybe some, uh, uh, peak plate on the top right above the gun. Yeah. Okay. That's sexy. Even oh, maybe even a little reactive armor on the side right here. Yeah, like the yeah. fence, like the strikers had. Yeah. Oh God, I love reactive armor, just because I hate RPGs. Is that a striker in the background? No, that's actually a sled. That's oh, a sled. So, yeah. 
Yeah, we were talking about uh, the striker uh, vehicle that JR used to ride in. Um, but uh, yeah, that, those main battle tanks are just ferocious. Dear Lord, that is a lot of gun surrounded. Yes. Yeah. That building? Yeah, no more. <laughs> now, it, Mike, can you imagine being penetrated by that massive saber around? That would be very. Uh, uh, they would fired, be very punch money. They didn't fire um, case rounds. It was it was superheated particles as well, right? Like the same, like the blasters. Yeah, I believe so. Just bigger. Well, I, I'd like to venture the thought that uh, you know, in a when you're in a MBT, isn't like anything just a suggestion to you? Like uh, that that building's a nice suggestion, but I'll. I'll think otherwise well i mean you also have multiple engagement systems on a tank as well so you probably got chafe you know in a modern military tank you got smoke mm -hmm. you got um uh you got uh close engagement systems such as uh, coax uh yep you can get uh, a coaxial gun or an m2 or uh an m240 bravo uh uh, uh used by uh, one of the co-pilots not co-pilots, but one of the uh, the tank commanders. Um, you can get uh, you got the main gun, obviously. Uh, uh oh, what are you laughing at? What I do? Just private chat. Don't worry about. It. You're good. Uh, do we have an insider joining? Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. That'd be Do seventeen eighty Mush. He's our Arma three dude. Hey Mush, what's shaking? Uh, mic check. Everybody can hear me, right? Yep. Excellent. Not too loud. My mic nope. is really sensitive. Uh, that's not something we say uh, to each other, in, or in polite company. Never <laughs> <laughs> works, man. I'm just here for a good time, not a long time. Uh, yeah, well, <laughs> you would be in the right place then. So uh, we understand that you are producing an Arma Three mod for Galaxy's Edge. You want to talk that up? Uh well, to answer your question, yes, I am. I currently have. Let me go look at my sheet here. Let's see. I have the N4. I have a DMR variant of it. I have the Surge shotgun, the NK4. And then I have a temporary N5 variant, which is the grade launcher. Right on. Okay. What kind of armor are these guys uh, sporting? None currently. I'm waiting on... So it's the House of Reason plan? We got it. Okay, yeah. No, <laughs> <laughs> that, no that, that's later. Later. <laughs> later. Uh, I actually don't... I'm not a modeler by, by habit. All the models that I've been provided have been done by, I believe, Sandman. Gotcha. So he's working on the... Legionnaire armor, or at least a temporary version of it, which is what I'm waiting on. So, and then I'm going to mod that and throw it right into the game. Yep, I'm going to do you? the configs and whatnot. So, so if people want to, if people want to download your mod, uh, what do they have to do if they want to jump into the Discord community and play this game with members of the Galaxy's Edge fan community? Uh, as of right now, the mod actually isn't on the workshop. It's not at a a point where I'd feel comfortable saying, hey, go ahead and play it because it works. I am planning on doing a alpha test here in another week, week and a half. Uh, I got probably six or seven people that are interested, and I think three or four of them are wanting to stream it. So, Right on. I, cannot, I cannot wait. I'm super excited. Um, pretty much right now I'm waiting to get all of the uh, get the guns actually working as they should before I say, hey, here you go. Probably a good idea. Yeah. yeah. So um, you can do the vehicles too? That is the... Uh, eventually, that is the hope, yes. I would love to be able to do that. Like I said, I'm not a, I'm not a modeler by trade, so it's vehicles are late, later in the process. Weapons is first, uh, armors after that, and then it'll be vehicles, probably starting with the sled. Right on. Uh, Mush does actually have a couple uh, image links that uh, he can post in the private chat for you so you can pull up so everybody else can see what he's talking about. Yeah, why don't you hit me, bro? Oh, yeah. Give me a sec. Let me... Right on, right on. And then yeah. while, while he's talking about the uh, the things, we can go through his Dark Whoops. Ops Insider intro. Absolutely. So, uh, Mush. Is yes, there... 
Don't call me, sir. It'll get weird fast. You won't be able to handle it, and I guarantee you uh, I'll get a call from the FCC. So, so are, that, you, are you a ma'am then? How does that work? Coming in. Guns out. Bring it, Junior. All right, so that being said, uh, who are you, and uh, while you were breathing, what made you famous? I am not at all famous. <laughs> I'm just a man who uh, I'm here said I enjoy the series. It was a great series to get into, which is why I wanted to do a uh, a mod for it. Because everybody was like, oh, you know, we're all talking about it. Like, oh, maybe we should do a game. Maybe we should do... It'd be awesome to be able to actually do half the things, you know, in the book. And right. I'm like, ah, let's just do a mod. Be easy. So... So if people want to play um, Galaxy's Edge... Uh, not Galaxy's Edge, but if people want to play Armor 3 to kind of get ready for this... Uh, where do they go to do that? Uh, is it just like a regular Steam community? Does uh, Are you guys playing it on Discord to kind of test things out? Um, the Arma 3 is on Steam, and I believe it's on sale right now with most of the DLCs. You will not need any of the DLCs as of right now to be able to play. Uh, the end goal, or rather the goal, is to make it say you have the base game and you have everything. So... Hopefully, it might make it a little easier for some of the younger, myself included, people that uh, enjoy the series without having to spend a whole lot of money. That's the goal, at least. Um, yeah. But yeah, there's not really a whole lot of alpha testing going on uh, that is coming. It's more of a, I got to get the configs right to make everything work proper. So, but yeah, those That's images good. are mostly uh, renders through Substance, which is just a texturing program. Gotcha. Uh, and then the last one Boy, there is actually uh, one in-game. Texture's a little wonky. I'm trying to figure out why. So, I, I think for right now, it uh, you know to, to do some uh, testing, it looks pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. You can tell it's an N4, so that's that's big and huge and proud. <laughs> so, so uh, go ahead. How how did you get into Galaxy's Edge? Because uh, Walt got sidetracked. <laughs> Yeah, I was looking at guns, and I'm like, yes, I like this N4. Go for uh, it. I got into the Galaxy's Edge with the uh, Legionnaire series. I read the first one, actually. I was at work, and I'm like, I need a new book to read. Hey, you should read this. Who recommended okay. it to you? Just Amazon. Oh, gotcha. Amazon's like, here, you should read this book. It's right in your series. Click. So, so Skynet recommended it to you. Yes. The Oracle I, of all things holy. You be nice. I, I read it. <laughs> I read it all the way through, and I'm like, you know what? I'll just download all the other ones, too. Click, 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 click. Right on. Yeah, that's exactly what I do, too. If I, re if I like the first book of a series, I buy the entire lot straight up. Like, no, really? no fucking around. Yep. In, like, in many series, too, like like GE was the prime example. Uh, my other series, like with Richard Fox and a few others, as soon as I even got halfway through the first books, I them all on the spot. Yeah. Right uh, so what was your favorite book in the series? Oh, that's a good sign. That is a really good sign. Go for it. Is it like children? You don't have a favorite, and that's what you tell them, but secretly you have a favorite? Well, I mean, here, here's the thing. If you had a choice to choose one of the books to save from a fire, what would you choose? Ooh. Is it bad of me to say that I don't remember all of the titles at all? <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're audible, it's understandable, because... You know, uh, audible version is, uh, oh, I really liked GE uh, book one or version one. Yeah, because they squished some of the books together. Um, so um, since you can't pick a favorite book, do you have a favorite character? I kind of like, uh, who was the, the sniper with the N N18? <laughs> Um, which 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 20? one? Yeah, which one? That's twenties. I like I like twenties. Twenties was pretty cool. I enjoyed his character. He's like, ah, oh, I don't need to see. I'll just shoot him. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, with the scene what? on Legionnaire with the eyes. Oh, yeah. oh. Like, what? <laughs> that was that was savage. Yeah, yeah. Because we 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 some of us have worked with that guy. Yeah. You so. Know, um, what about you, Walt? What was your favorite character? My favorite character? Balder. Hands, 
Uh, yeah, Balder. <laughs> He's around here somewhere. I got to be quiet because if I say his name too loud, he'll come in here and like suckle muck me, and it'll it it won't be pretty for anybody. Say, really say his name three times, and it's like Beetlejuice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, bloody Mary. <laughs> if you say his name three times, he appears and he demands treats, and if you don't get it, uh, he shows you exactly what a Belgian Malinois can do. Um, the uh, I would have to say uh, just because of how tragic he is. I mean, when you first meet him, he's like the coolest alligator in the swamp. But then, as you see him in the side series and stuff like that, he is a tragic figure who you think you want to be like until you see what he's like, and that would be Tyrus Rex. Okay. Yep. You know, um, you know everybody when you when you talk to fans of the series and they talk about Tyrus Rex and and like he's so badass in his armor and it, oh my god you know and you're like you're like yes but everybody he knows he's outlived everybody he knows you mm-hmm. know he he's um, he's savage because of an upbringing that we just saw in Savage World uh, Savage Wars three um, you know he's just very very tragic figure uh, when you when you read him in uh in requiem for medusa mm-hmm. oh my god the the like the ninja the ninja showed up on scene cutting onions you know when you uh, oh i mean the dude just cannot catch a break don't don't forget chasing dragon you know oh my god the end of that oh. book, right oh uh, I, I know yeah. that that gets sphinx real good every time yeah just that that one scene and you're just like brutal right so yeah i i love tyrus rex because he's while he on the outside appears very crunchy he's very squishy on the inside and and that's <laughs> you know it just shows a lot of character depth because when they originally wrote him they said they they wanted to model him after a crunchy vietnam vet with alzheimer's who still believed he was don quixote tilting at well mills you know yeah and that's, and I think they pulled that off epically. Um, so, um, if uh, if people wanted to know a little bit more about uh, the Dark Ops Insider, that is Mush. Um, would you Woot. like? To give, what's that? I said Woot. I'm here. Yes. So, so, how did you pick Mush? I, I've got to know. Okay. 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 Is so it because of the games? I. I played, I was a part of the, an op tray, which is a Halo mod uh, community. And if anybody's played Halo, particularly Halo 3 and 4, you have a, a placeable object called a bubble shield. Well, the mod, the op tray mod has it in game, but the problem is, is it's technically functioning like a placeable C4. Mm-hmm. And so I put it down on a zero second timer. So as soon as it, it got placed down, it blew up. It ended up killing me, because I was running as the medic. It killed our team lead. It killed our our RTO, which is a radio operator, and like two or three other riflemen. So they're like, well, we're all dead. You got mushed. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Right on. Yeah. Right on. All right. And it just kind of stuck, and I can't get rid of it. <laughs> Works for me. The good, the good nicknames you can't. Uh, no. No. I guess no. not. It's better than half the nicknames I've been called. So, well, yeah, I feel you on that one. <laughs> yeah, we we love your five head, <laughs> the ferocious <laughs> five head, mate. <laughs> Lord Ferocious himself. Oh my God, he's gonna send you a, pa- a package of dust in the mail. Oh um, please. <laughs> so <laughs> taking the blunt force segment segue away from Walt yeah, nice. to, oh, to mess it, with do him. It, do it. Um, if you click on that link, that's some uh, concept uh, sketches for the Tri Fighters. Ooh, nice! That are going ah. into. So, what made you decide to become a uh, an insider? That's a great question. I did. <laughs> peer pressure. <laughs> peer pressure. A lot, a lot of peer pressure. Yes. Uh, no, I just enjoy the series, and I was like, you know what? I like the author. It's good books. Here, take my money. Right. I keep reading good books. So, Tri Fighter, very interesting. Was that you? Was that your sketches? No, no, no. That was actually uh, Orphan Last. Uh, he's. Uh, let me go see what his whole name is, because it's. Uh, it looked a little weird when I first saw it, and I'm like, what? Yeah, Orphan Last. Uh, he's in the Discord, uh, actually in Vanguard Company, and uh, yeah, he just started sketching out. Uh, 
all the stuff and he's like yeah what are you guys thinking and, you know I'm, I'm looking for more insight you know how close do you think i'm getting so now that you see these walt and i know you have a couple concept uh uh things and uh some book covers how, how close do you think he got these are nice i like these uh, uh it would be interesting to see these uh um put on an autocad and uh and sketched out for something like the armor 3 mod which was you know interesting. Brad Torgerson does this kind of stuff for Star Trek nonsense. Maybe we could convert him and get him to start making actual like schematics that, that fit like AutoCAD for, oh, you're, for Galaxy's you're, Edge. You're, you're talking about the, the, the sh cutaway ship schematics? Because I got a uh, USS yeah. Enterprise uh, and, uh, 1701C? Yeah, yeah. I, got, I got the C. Torgerson does a bunch of those, and so maybe we could convert him and he'll start doing some Galaxy's Edge stuff. Right on. That's pretty dope. That's my so, goal now for 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so we were talking about vehicles, Mush. Um, you got a favorite vehicle in the series? I kind of have to go with either the Max or the Sled. I'm uh, I'm a sucker for QRF Force, and so the Sled's got to be my favorite. Yeah. Uh, did you serve? Uh, no, I, no. I'm going to ask you this. How old do you think I am before we go any farther? I would have to say late 20s, early 30s. Well, I thank you for that. Uh, no, you're actually wrong. I turned 22 last month, believe it or okay. not. Right uh, unfortunately, no, I was not. I'm not able to serve. I wanted to. Uh, I got a couple. I got a heart condition, and I got some uh, some hearing and vision problems that stopped me from going. Unfortunately, right which on. is fine. I it's figured. Just, it's just strange to hear a civilian start saying stuff like QRF. So I was very happy. <laughs> Woot! Oh, you're welcome. Yeah. You're yeah, welcome. Some of us don't say woot. <laughs> Dab? Yeah, the, 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 the inner boomer in him is uh is, yeah, is cringing yeah. right now. <laughs> what heresy is this? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Heresy. Let me let me put on my Paul Revere hat and slap you youngins <laughs> off my lawn. Um, <laughs> so we, we were talking about the HK mechs and then we got into talking about the uh, the main battle tanks. I, I mean just the repulsors supporting all that armor would probably be crazy. Um what do you guys think about the air power, like in atmosphere, uh, as fielded by the slicks? Oh, the uh, the air power that we saw at the Battle of Terragon, Terago, Terragon Moon. Terragon. Oh no, no, that's 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 Terago, uh, yeah. that's extra atmosphere. So that's that's space. I'm talking, okay. I'm talking like in atmosphere, the slicks. Oh, you saw a lot of that in the the various Order of the Centurion books, the gun yes. gunships. Yep. That was nice. I, I liked what we saw of it in uh, the actual, the first one, the Order of the Victorian. Or when Tin they called Man. Or Tin Man, yeah. Yep. I forgot about that. Right? Oh, my God. Because the Slick came in and, and, and did his job, pulled they had people to, out. Yeah, they had to remove a seat. So um, that particular model of, uh, of bot could get in and act as a co-pilot. So in that Tin Man scene where, they're, um, where it opens up and you meet the pilot and the, the bot... And we don't want to give any spoilers, although that's so far back, it's hard to imagine people haven't read it. But that reminds me of that scene. Have you seen the uh, the book or the movie? Excuse me uh, for Mogadishu, uh, Black Hawk Down at the end, where they're cleaning it out. I had some friends that was there, but uh, that was before my time. But they have um, the scene where they're cleaning out that Humvee to go back out. That's kind of the mental image I got when they were when they were loading that that's that slick. bird to go back out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, just just holes, just dripping blood from the casualties that they were pulling out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, and and oh my god, some of the just the the cover image for that alone um, was just fantastic. Um, I mean, just, uh, just gorgeous, gorgeous. Let's see if I can find it real quick. That I just, um, yeah, it's the picture of the the robot pulling the guy that's still firing. That is badass, right? Um, and uh, they, they, the the one they just released with a lot of the, uh, um, with a lot of the, uh, like the trade dress for the covers, for the audible. Um, that's just some sexiness right there. Um, what do you mean the trade dress? So it's got all the the fanciness on it. Oh, oh, yeah. See the, if you look at the the man on the left, if you take that out. That's what I have when I grabbed it from the um, from Odd Fans. So this right. is new. I didn't see the rest of the image. Oh my good, that's badass! Right? 
you know, and then you got that mech, you got the down legionnaire getting pulled off. Um, uh, Where's the mech? I'm not seeing it. I'm seeing seeing the warbot. And yeah, seeing the warbot. The two... That's what I'm talking about. Okay. Yeah. So, but I just that image just when I saw that image uh, when it first came out, I was just like, that is that is seven shades of amazing. Fifty so, shades. What are you talking about? That's awesome. Uh, I only need seven. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be in my bunk. You're right. Uh, don't bother me for at least a half an hour. Um, but uh, I like that. I like that uh, expansion. Right. Really, really nice. Um, and there was another one too, uh, if I can find it. Uh, but yeah, the the slick I thought was a really. I, I kind of. I couldn't picture it as a Blackhawk. Um, I felt like the slick was a Huey. Especially yeah. because they were on Sidon, and it, it was it was you know uh, Vietnam, not Vietnam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, what did you guys think of the slicks? I thought they were cool. I uh, I'd, I'd like to see more uh, more images of them, and I definitely would like to see them in game. Yeah, and it's um, sometimes you just wish that they would. Like write a book that's literally nothing but the lore kind of thing, where they could expand out all that kind of stuff. More but, featherhead yeah. trash. I love featherhead trash. Mm. Hold your horse. Best son. life, mate. Huh? All, all the Air Force's best life. You know, don't at me, Pog life, best life. <laughs> uh, there are sometimes I question my life decisions as I was sitting in the mud. But yes, yep, there's <laughs> that. <laughs> Um, the, uh, uh, we, we got a really awesome, um, uh, there's a, uh, there's a type of, uh, special, highly specialized Marine that sometimes works with the, uh, with the Legion. Um, and in the third contracts and terminations book, uh, Madam Guillotine, you actually get uh, a really interesting view of operations aboard a slick. Um, I, I, did you guys read, did you guys read into that? Um, I have not. I um, well, last year was a rough year, so a lot of what I read I didn't retain. So I'm going back and rereading a lot of stuff. Right on. Uh, what was the? Uh, was it just a transport craft and takeover? Um, for the Bowie no, I, section. Yeah, but they had uh, they had uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, air crew on uh, on it that uh, had uh, gyroscopic mounted guns on the side. Yeah, that was that was nice. No, no. When when he was taking the uh, the 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 entertainment women's. Over. Oh, oh, you know, I don't know. Cause cause that 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 was kind of a neat. Um, <laughs> hey hey, your uh, your 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 vehicles uh, smoking. Ah, yeah, it's fine. It does that. <laughs> yeah, it does. She'd be right, Mike. <laughs> I have no idea what he's saying. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, no, but, yeah, no, but she'd be pretty right, eh? Don't worry about it. She falls off, eh? Just take us straight down to the shop. No, nah, don't worry about it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that there you go. It, but but remember, parts, if, if parts fall off of it, you know, that, that means good, right? Right, Matt? Yeah, 100 oh, If you've got car or mechanical issue, mate, just turn your radio up. You can't hear it, therefore, there's no problem. <laughs> hey, Walt. Yes. Now you know how Bobby Boucher felt when he was talking to the Cajun. <laughs> <laughs> it's brilliant oh my god um so we, we we were just talking about the slick and how the slick is kind of like a mission critical piece for when these guys are on the ground because it provides some uh, much needed air support uh but let's talk about the uh the multi-role uh so like the aerospace and the space type stuff uh starting of course with the tri-fighters um what did you guys think of those things when they first made their appearance Oh my goodness! That was in the image on uh, on that cover where you had all those different ships. That's still one of my favorite covers, just because there's so much to show. Right. Can you throw that up for everybody? Do you have that image? Now, baby. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of goodness. Um, uh, a lot of goodness in that cover. Uh, give me thirty seconds. Something I often tell my wife. Um, <laughs> at least you're honest. Well, <laughs> I'm old, you know. Um, but um, let's see. I can find. I have a clean version of this somewhere, but uh, I'll get you guys as big as I can. 
All right, this is starting to get weird fast. Uh, oh. All right. I'm glad I know the context. If someone didn't know the context and then someone came to me and said, mate, I'll get I'll get big, big pretty quick, I'd be a little bit concerned. <laughs> I mean, what, what he doesn't want you to know is uh, below Ooh. camera, he's oh. wearing his Ranger panties. Seizure. Seizure. <laughs> right. That was weird. Let's try that again. There we go. I didn't do it. Don't blame me. Oh, nice. Oh. Yeah. So you got... You got the, uh, the what do you call it? Whoa, I got to look at the screen I'm using. That's a tri-fighter in the background, right? Yep, right there. You got a tri-fighter. Um, you got a, a pretty, pretty big, like a host of them, right? You got the, the battleships above, uh, some of the frigates. Um, the, that book was just that the, the, the battles in this book, I felt like I was, like I was reading somebody had taken a crap ton of speed and then written like 14 episodes of the new Battlestar Galactica. Mm. So you know I mean? the image I'm That's talking really about shortly, isn't it? has a picture of a space battle set above, looks like a planet. Um, I have it as oh, one of the, I know what you're talking about. One of the static images I use for, uh, for the page. Yeah. I, I, I don't know what that cover was from. I do. Um, what was, uh, the one before, uh, the last book. Hold on. Doop -doop -doop. Um, keep talking. Tri fighters. But yeah, it has the uh, it has the tri fighters over the um, over the planet. You see, it looks like the tri fighters anyway fighting in space. Yep, going there now. And then you see some of it in the um, oh, the one where it's the he's attacking the shipyards. That cover it looks like there's a, a fighter as well. In the background. Getting it. Aha. That image right yes, there. Yes, that image right there. If you if you take out the uh, the pile of bodies in the backdrop. <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot going on in that. But I, I like that image. But if you look at the space scene, you can see, like if you start zooming in, some of the various ship classes. Whoa, extreme close up. Yeah, that's yeah. the one I was thinking about. So like um the one with you see attacking to the I don't know, off to the left right there. You you're right on it. That almost looks like what I pictured I figured was a tri fighter making a gun run. That looks that looks like a big that's like that's a frigate, man. That thing's huge. It's hard to tell on that little image. Yeah, all these are probably like frigate class or, or maybe even destroyers. Um, and, and I mean destroyers in the Navy sense, not in like the Star Wars sense. Everything's a destroyer in Star Wars. Oh, my God. It's okay, Star so Destroyer. Super you Star. Destroyer. It's a TIE Destroyer. <laughs> yeah. Well, it like looks you, like they could be asteroids. That's actually spiders. Yeah. What was that? Sorry, Dow, what was that? If you look at where the... Um, uh, looks like it could be comments, a little specs. If you actually zoom in, because I have that image in high def, that looks like that's the fighters. That's what I'm talking about. Right. So uh, if you if you follow the Galaxy's Edge page where they post official type stuff, and you should if you're not, uh, we use the uh, the image of the space fighters periodically, and you'll be able to just save it. And it's got the little Galaxy's Edge watermark, and you can zoom in. Yeah, if you look up to um, just to the left of Stullis, that ship that's uh, above you right near the exit, just to the left of that right in there, those little ships in there no, down in the void between those ships. Oh, right here. Where, yeah, if you look into that, if you zoom in, those are those are tri-fighters. That's crazy. Move. Yeah. I've scoured that image a lot. I love that image. We couldn't tell. But yeah, I, I like how those ships there look like stingrays. Is that like a magic piss tag of the uh, Australian wildlife there? Out of our idol Steve being taken. This is war. If that, if that's, if that model of stingrays, this is war. Well, that's, that's, that's actually, they, they were mind. named the Crocodile Dundees. Uh, you didn't know. <laughs> so, so You're about actually, to have your hand card revoked. Well, uh, I didn't know this. I misunderstood from before, but that the guy that did the sketches of the tri fires and stuff like that, uh -huh. uh, he actually is going to be three D modeling those, and awesome. uh, he's going to provide the, the the files for us to use. Oh, that's hey, fantastic! 
Hey, Walt, if I get my man code revoked, does that mean I got to join the Air Force? Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, them to Fortin Woods. <laughs> Sincerely. I, can't Great, I mean, I've seen okay. the Australian <laughs> Air Force's, uh, you know, outfits. I, I think they're kind of cute with them, uh, them short shorts. <laughs> Just I'm, not not started, mate. I'm going to say for the record, too, I do not like our blue cams at all. That's why I wear green and I wear combat shorts. <laughs> yeah, well, combat I shorts. I can't you say like anything t- because I'm a short, fat, bald man and I've worn silkies. So, yeah, it's, it's Daisy Dukes of Freedom. It, Daisy Dukes of Freedom. <laughs> That's right. So, so back to the tri fighters. Yes, tri fighters <laughs> were pretty badass. You know, super maneuverable, both in and out of atmosphere. Uh, the Battle of Tarago was just brutal, brutal, brutal. The, uh, the captain that went uh, went rogue decided he wanted to be a merc, but he had that ship. Uh, what was it? The frigate that was yes. uh, pulling away. Yeah, that was one. I'd like to see more of that kind of stuff. Like yeah. space. That was cool. Um, uh, but I mean, you know, the ones that steal the show in all of these. All of these kind of properties, uh, even Galaxy's Edge. Uh, we got to talk about the Indelible Six. You know, so these these light tramp yeah. freighters that are gunned up and just like, you know, ready to do dirty deeds. The yeah. Indelible Six, uh, of course. My man flying the Obsidian Crow. Um, I just, you know, and then you got, uh, oh, God, I'm, I'm going to have my Galaxy's Edge card revoked. What was the name of uh, Hogus's ship? Can't remember. Oh, it's been a while. Oh my god! It all blends together for me, no. and I don't have a, a, a TBI. <laughs> but at least I'm not colorblind. <laughs> <laughs> I blame my mother. I really do. But yeah, so the uh, the uh, Lane. Uh, Lana uh, Remanoff is in the uh, in the feed uh, on Facebook, uh, laughing at the fact that we just said dirty deeds. Um, Done dirt cheap. Dirty deeds, and of show. course, oh, Bradley, baby to it. Fuck. <laughs> Bradley Huntoon uh, uh, giving a big shout out to Jr. asking if he can even see in Fifty Shades. Um, no, no, I can't. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> you seen the eight Crayola crowns? That's about all I got. I got gotcha. you. Um, so, uh, yeah, these these tramp freighters, uh, you know, where smugglers, bounty hunters. Um, uh, what did you think about the, the ones that we saw in the Galaxy's Edge property season one and the side properties? Uh, how'd you guys uh, how'd you guys take to those? And do you have a favorite? I know which one mine is. I always enjoy them. I sort of picture them like the. Uh, the who the, the uh, Falcon. No, the phone book, uh, phone box where it's like bigger on the inside because <laughs> you, you described it as, you know, you don't think they're that big and then you see what's all on the inside. You're like, wait a minute, it doesn't quite mesh. Um, so I, I always sometimes have picture trouble picturing the scale, but, it, you know, they're a classic for a reason. Like every every space opera promise, property has something like it. Right on. Uh, how about it, Matt? You being our resident Air Force did he freeze? <laughs> or did I freeze? No, him? he no, just got sidetracked. Sorry, I'm watching with I'm watching my dogs on because one's freaking out. Um more well, subject in, so I I am like I'll be talking watching my dogs just because yeah, everyone's been a bit. Indelible weird. six. Yes. Do you like it? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. No, to answer your question. Yes. So I was I was half zoomed in out there. I apologize for that. Uh yes, yeah, it's it's your home ship, if that makes sense. It's like yeah, your, your hub. It's just you can come back to it. It feels homely, and it's good. Feels homey or homely? Because that homely. <laughs> Hotel Oscar Mike Echo Lima Yankee homely. So it's so ugly. ugly. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> How about it, Mush? You got a favorite ship from uh, from the freighters that are uh, the light freighters that are are used as uh, smuggling devices throughout Galaxy's Edge. The the indelible uh, bleh, 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 bleh. the edge is pretty good. <laughs> um, I, I can't speak English. I'm sorry. It's quarter after ten at night. I expect that from Australian Matt here. That makes sense. Nah, yeah, nah, down nah, under. Nah. I mean, listen to him. But I I don't expect it from you. Wow. Don't expect Ooh. much from me. I'm not I'm not here to to please you. <laughs> I, I'm not the girlfriend or the wife. <laughs> oh, oh, we like God. him. We can keep him. Yep. Now, the one thing we have, I don't. I, oh God. <laughs> 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 the one thing, the one thing I don't think we've seen though is, uh, have we seen uh, an aquatic vehicle 
other than uh, the one that was in, because it wasn't really a Legion vehicle. Uh, the one that was in Iron Wolves, it was a, uh, you know, it was like a, like a river barge. Uh, yeah. But have we seen an aquatic vehicle other than that? I don't even think I can so. think of. I mean, so, honestly, couldn't well, the sl- couldn't the uh, the uh, sleds go go over water because they're they're hover vehicles essentially? Does, I would assume, but what about going in the water? Does it count if a certain um, pilot, you know, sort of puts her ship in the water and swims away? Does that make it aquatic? I, I mean, we can't say much without spoilers, but yeah, no, does that qualify? Like a- submarine or a battleship or you know you, sh- like you a- shoot it down into the it goes into the water i mean technically i guess it's a submarine now uh, no that's not what i was going for um, i don't think we've seen any I-, I would like to see some like uh like we saw in uh the animated clone wars uh where they had that like half a season where they were they were on uh, uh admiral akbar's planet uh i, I would like oh, to see no. some like aquatic Aquatic action from uh, Legion, uh, especially Legion personnel, and like and like aquatic armor. Well, How cool would that be? If a ship could stand the void, it stands to reason that water would be okay. Um, different pressure restrictions, because in space, the pressure from the inside is going to push out, but in the water, the pressure of the water is going to push in. So you'd have to you'd have to find a way. Maybe shields. But I mean, they they train NASA underwater in pools to get used to their suits. So in like twelve feet, <laughs> don't, twenty feet. Don't bug me with details. <laughs> don't you put your don't you put your details in my science fantasy? Oh my god! But I, I actually want more of the the bigger ships. The I liked it when the Black Fleet and. Uh, the the lead, well the House of Reason fleet the Repub fleet were duking it out like that was that was some thrilling action I like I like seeing the big dreadnoughts if you would pounding away at each other yeah I mean it was a lot to those battles um, a lot of moving parts I loved the change in perspective uh, it was it was so much good stuff in there you need to get a, a super dreadnought that does nothing but fire out dreadnoughts as its main weapon <laughs> yeah and, and of I mean, course that there's certain people in the Discord that that you know want to make uh, Vampa their emperor or empress, I guess. Yeah, they're they're also mentally disabled, so we we accept them. <laughs> what is that? Oh uh, my god! What, what company is that? Is that Victory? No, no, no. That'd be Terror. And if oh. you if you're gonna, if you're thinking uh, V Company, it'd be Vanguard. Yeah, thank you. Not Victory. Like I said, it's it's really late at night for me. So before we call it a podcast, uh, how about we get some final thoughts around the table, starting with our own Daniel. Oh, and I, uh, I, I want Savage Wars to hurry up and release on Audible so I can catch up and be in all the goodness. Uh, with Stephen I Lang. Know... Oh, my what? God, yes. What was yes. that? With Stephen Lang narrating. Yeah, uh, definitely. That. I mean, they robbed on. him in Avatar. I mean, oh. Yes, but um, did you read? Did you? No, you didn't. Didn't you? Didn't did you, Matt? You read the end of Savage Wars three, right? I sure did. Can you picture that um, late night interaction being Stephen Lang? Oh yes. Oh yes. You know what I'm talking about, right? I know what you're talking about. Yes, I, I, we can't say what happens in it. You got to be if those. You got to be an insider to know what happens and know what we're talking about. So. Be an insider. <laughs> I feel like I'm being attacked. I'm the only one who's not in this panel right now. It's it's, it's okay. They peer pressured me into it. It's fine. Yes, but you're one I'm of the, in the same boat. So I don't get any special privileges. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure, sure. I've heard that one before. Uh-huh. Yeah, he, he's going to jump off this call. What he doesn't want us to see is he's actually streaming from his gold-plated bathroom with all the <laughs> reserved <laughs> money. <laughs> uh, I hope so. I don't know. We'll, we'll see. Checks in the mail, right? Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, how about a JR? Final thoughts before we call it a podcast. Uh, after talking about all these ships and, and vehicles, I might need some alone time. Right. Um, uh, how about it, Mush? I just got to read the all the extra stuff that I could do now because I'm an insider. I oh, haven't yet okay. been working a lot, so. So good. I find that like uh, when I'm running behind and I get the stuff from 
the insider subscription. Uh, I throw it right on my phone. I use a, like a reader app just to have it read to me. That way when I'm um, uh, walking my 70 pound psychotic flying chainsaw, um, I have something to occupy my mind while, while I'm about to die um, or be yanked into traffic. Um, uh, final thoughts from Matt. Go for it. Uh, aside from all my usual ones, why I really badly want Savage Wars to come out for uh, Audible. Um, I really want to see a story about us Air Force Logistics hardcore forklift operators who have deployed everywhere, and we are quite clearly the most badass people to ever exist. Backbone. Mate, where, 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 else, where else would you find someone who can effectively move loads in the streets and dump loads in the sheets? <laughs> haven't, haven't you been replaced by bots already? Uh, not not in aliens. They still had loaders and aliens. Hey, I, I'm just saying logistics is the is king. I worked enough yeah, warehouses please. to know that. So, nah. Look, honestly though, um, I, I, I keep saying every every podcast. I'm excited to see where this year goes. Um, for everything, this is so much happening, and before we know it, we are going to be the OG, the original team when this thing goes massively mainstream. Hopefully, with like with everything all around the world. And we can we can sit here and safely say we were there. We made it happen. Right yeah, on. I'm yeah. game for it. Cool deal. Now, before we run out the door, um, uh, Daniel, yes. did you want to really quick shout out to the community at large about a certain event that might or might not happen coming up? Yes. Or is that uh, are you keeping that only the insiders for right now? No, it's okay. I'll, I'll let people know. I, I, I think I said it last uh, public podcast, but we are definitely aiming for July to be the time that we do uh, our meetup. Um, and, and where that is that? Be, that'll be on my property, up on the good old Pacific Northwest, Woodby Island, um, within, I think, three hours of Jason. And he said as long as I give him the date, he'd be willing to show up and make an make a appearance and maybe you know, sign some covers or some stuff like that. Who knows? Um, but yeah, uh, definitely getting more information on that uh, set up uh, so that everybody else can see. We are thinking about doing a airsoft or paintball um, tournament, and it'll probably be maybe one or two days so that people could come out, set up tents, you know, do a camp out, kind of treat it like a little mini deployment for those of us who aren't military and are like, oh, yeah, do go on a deployment. will be fun, you know, because you know, we're honor. autistic. You can wear it while you're trying to take a poop. <laughs> but, yeah, uh, we'll definitely be getting some more information within the next couple of weeks uh, and then posting it accordingly. So, yeah. Right on. That's awesome. Thanks for putting that together, man. That, that's got to be a lot of work. Hey, it, it's not just me. There's other people. Uh, JR is actually helping out in the background when he's got time. And and there's also uh, Daya, who is uh, our good old mother Ree from uh, the Discord, that is honestly doing uh, more than half the work, in my opinion. Uh, she's fantastic, and I do appreciate everything she's doing to help us get it going. Awesome. Uh, I just want to say thanks to both uh, Matt and Daniel for um, uh, their tireless work on the Discord. Um, I pop in and out. I mean, I, I, I lit the match, but you guys keep uh, dropping down fuel so that thing burns on all cylinders every day, and I really appreciate the work you, you do. Uh, JR, thank you so much for putting out the reservist and always coming on the show. Uh, it's always great to have you, um, even if we can't see your face, and you know, because uh, the rest of us have a a bet that you have tape in the middle of your glasses um and mush thanks for coming out and uh talking to us tonight uh letting us know about uh being an insider we re we really appreciate you coming out yeah i enjoyed it i oh, wear my you. birth control glasses <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought that was just being in the air force oh my god Ooh. oh yeah Come on, sir. <laughs> yep moab inbound and on that galaxy's edge is out